So this is a beautiful problem, in my opinion. You get to draw a picture. And again, most trig problems, if it's interesting, you get to draw a picture. If you're not drawing a picture, that means it's not really an interesting problem or we're not doing it right. So I have the tangent of the cosine inverse. All right, cosine inverse, I remember, is an angle. So I can reinterpret this problem to say the cosine of some angle is equal to r over four. And because this whole cosine here is an angle, I want to find what is the tangent of that same angle. So what I need to do is draw this as a triangle. On a triangle, cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So we draw a triangle. And I'm not worried about the scale here because r is unknown. It's some variable. So this right here, I'm going to say that's my angle for this triangle adjacent. OK, so that would be this one. That's next to adjacent to the angle. Hypotenuse is always the long side here opposite that right angle. And so what I'm missing here is this opposite side. Tangent, that's going to be the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Right? Y over x, y that vertical, x is that horizontal leg, the way I've drawn it. So let's see, I know the adjacent side. I don't know the opposite side yet. So I got to use the Pythagorean theorem to find that. Pythagorean theorem says question mark squared plus r squared is equal to four squared. And I want to know what that question mark is. So we'll solve for the question mark. Subtract the r squared over. Four squared is 16. Take the square root. And again, you cannot reduce this. The square root and the square do not cancel because the subtraction stands in the way. A square root symbol that has multiple things in it is like a parentheses. And you have to do what's inside the parentheses before you can deal with what's outside. And since we don't know what R is, we can't reduce the subtraction, which means we can't cancel a square and a square root. This is it. I am done. That is the simplest version of that expression. Question mark equals the square root of 16 minus r squared. Does not simplify. That right there we just discovered is my opposite side. So then the answer, the tangent of that angle has to be that square root divided by the adjacent side, which was r. And since the numerator doesn't simplify anymore, I can't cancel any squares and square roots up there. I really can't do much with that R on the bottom. It does not cancel with the R on the top. Does not happen. Is it possible to rewrite this algebraically? Yes, but I seriously doubt you could use less ink than what I have here. In a previous problem, I mentioned that the 16 is a perfect square as is the R squared. So 16 minus r squared factors as 4 minus r times 4 plus r. All of that is still inside the square root. And that green thing there uses more ink than the red thing. And I really don't think it helps me here. It does give me an alternate way to write this. Right? I could say it's the big old square root of parentheses 4 minus r times 4 plus r over r. And again, since these r's are inside with subtractions and parentheses in the square root, the r and the denominator cannot cancel either one of them. That's illegal according to the order of operations. So this still doesn't reduce, and it uses more ink. And then you might say, well, what if we break the square root on this product and say this is the square root of 4 minus r times the square root of 4 plus r? That is a dangerous maneuver because this is only true if both of these are positive at the same time. And that's not necessarily true because r is a variable. So this is probably a bad idea right there. It's going to change the result in an unpredictable way. So that's as good as it gets right there. How would I check that? 
I could check it by considering this right here a function. And my claim is it's equal to this function down here and use an X instead of an R and see if they have those functions have the same graph. Why not? And let's, um, if I just reload, let's clear the screen. So my original function, I'm gonna call it f of x, was the, and I'm gonna use an x instead of an r, tangent of the cosine inverse. Tangent of the, let's go grab that from the menu, cosine inverse of x over, what was it again, four. And then just to be safe, I am gonna put this in radio, oh, went back to radian mode because I reset it, good, good, good. And then I claim that the new version, now I'm gonna give it a different name because I think they're the same, but I'm not positive. I'm gonna call this one G of X. I think G of X, another way to write that function should be the same set of points, the same graph, should be a fraction with the square root in the numerator and that was four minus, and I'm using X for my variable, divided by, what was it divided by? Four? No, X. Ooh, all right, so something went wrong there. Oh, four squared, I think that's where I went wrong. That should be a 16. Let's double check the notes. 16 minus x squared over x, okay. 16 minus x squared in the root over x, okay. And then this is blue. If I click over here and turn off the blue, I see the red. If I click on the blue again, it turns it back on and it looks like they sit right on top of each other. If there's any doubt, then just pick a number like x equals negative two and see if they both give the same y value. So what is f of negative two? What is g of negative two? All right, so we need to be smart problem solvers. So what that means is we have ways to check our answers and these graphing calculators are amazingly powerful. They don't always give exact answers, but they give us phenomenal ways to double check math that we penciled out.